Howdy, Larkin Rose here. Time for the daily rant. I'm driving back from Borkfest. <coughs> and there was a discussion that happened there. Actually, there were lots of discussions that happened there. There was one in particular that afterwards I wish it had been recorded. Um, uh, but I'm going to do a rant about the topic now. Um, I was talking with whoever about you know, when statists do the thing of, well, who will build the roads, or who will take care of the sick, or what about this, and what happens to polluters, and blah, 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 you know, all this, this thing of how will this work, how will this work, what will anybody do about this, um, and a thing that occurred to me before, I don't think I've even done a rant about it, um, but it's come up before, all, pretty much Every single statist argument is not actually um, the statist's objection to the concept of voluntarism. Pretty much every statist argument is a subconscious, it's not even int intentional on their part, it's a subconscious attempt to not have to think about the main point. It's changing the subject again, not, they don't like plan it out and try to be deceptive. It's just something the human brain does when it doesn't want to deal with something um, that's too weird or creepy to think about or admit or whatever. Like it's all the way uh, psychological denial, like literally that, that exact phenomenon of, I just don't want to admit that. So my brain is going to look somewhere else. And there are, you know, there, there are a lot of things that when people have had really traumatic experiences, their brain doesn't want to look at that. And they pretend it didn't happen. Sometimes they can't remember it. You know, our brains do weird-ass things. Um, and basically, every statist argument is that. And that's one of the reasons I, I don't bother to, like... Okay, let's entertain every individual concern that people can have of, well, how will the roads be built? All right, well, here, read this book or whatever, this article or something about how roads could be built and maintained without a ruling class. But, but what about the poor? Okay, read this book over here about caring for the poor without the inclusion of extortion and, and government involvement. Well, but what about blah, 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 blah? Um, Nobody, and if you just, you know, if you understand some of the basic disproofs of authority, like you can't delegate a right you don't have, um, you can't have an obligation to do what you think is wrong, which means you can't be obligated to obey an external authority, which means there isn't such a thing as an external authority, because it means a thing that has the right to tell you what to do. Um, so those disproofs, you know, saying, what about the roads? Like, is logically 100% irrelevant to those proofs. Like, oh, yeah, roads. I forgot about roads. Well, in that case, I can delegate rights I don't have, and I can be obligated to do what I think is wrong. Like, I did nothing to do with it. It's like a, but what about the, just so they don't have to address the underlying principle. And so I was talking to somebody about that, and I was saying that the, he was talking about some person in particular, I forget if it was a relative or what, um, it was like, well, how will this work? And I explained, blah, blah, blah. And I was pointing out that, yeah, but that isn't really his objection. And he doesn't even know that. You know, because of the, the weird things that the human mind does, he doesn't even know that his brain just changed the subject on purpose so that it didn't have to think about it. And I, I watched so many anarchists get derailed by responding to... Um, by responding to the derailings that the statist mind naturally does. And mine did that too when I was a statist. And, you know, may still do that in other things that my brain doesn't want to look at. Um, but it's, you know, like, so, so if you get a discussion where an anarchist is saying, like, you don't have a right to initiate violence against somebody, but who will build the roads? Well, you can have roads, blah, blah. Like, you just let them change the subject away from the, the basic moral principle to bickering about some detail. 
And by letting them change the subject, in a way, it's saying that, all right, if I can't explain how everything will work without it, then yeah, we can have a ruling class. It's the, but who will pick the cotton thing? Like, slavery is bad, but who will pick the cotton? Oh, you're right, slavery is good now, because otherwise, who would pick the cotton? Like, that's not an argument, that's not anything. That is logically 100% irrelevant to the statement that slavery is immoral. If somebody responds with, but who will pick the cotton, that is unrelated to the statement. Now, if you say, okay, slavery is immoral and it's bad and all that, and then you say, hmm, wonder who's going to pick the cotton. Like, if it's a separate issue in a separate discussion, that's fine. Because, yeah, maybe we should figure out what to do about picking the cotton. But if you use it in response to slavery is bad, that's co- complete non sequitur. It has nothing to do with it. It doesn't make it good because we're not sure how to pick the cotton otherwise. And every single statist argument is a non sequitur because it's all that. It's all, but what about this thing over here that makes it so I can argue about something other than the basic principles and concepts and and logic that I don't have a response to? And again, they don't think that. They don't consciously think that. Their brain just is desperate to move the topic to something that they know how to think about and know how to talk about. Um, Or even move it to mythology that they've memorized. Like, well, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. No, it's not. It's words on a piece of parchment. But but it's the supreme law of the land. No, it's still just words on parchment. You're repeating something you were taught to believe. You were taught to take it on faith. doesn't actually make sense. It's provably bogus. But you don't want to look at that. You don't want to question it. Well, there would be chaos, or you're a communist, or something. Uh, but it, it, it says the power to tax. Uh, yeah, well, can people delegate a right they don't have? But the Constitution! Yeah, so there's that premise that you're not willing to question or think about or re-examine. So your brain will fly in all sorts of other directions in order to not have to talk about that and not have to address that. Um, whether it's the Constitution or the belief in government at all or the belief in democracy or the belief in law or, you know, whatever the human brain just goes into evasion mode without the person consciously even choosing to do that. It just kind of happens. Um, And I don't, like, not only do we not have an obligation to explain how everything in the world is going to work without a ruling class, not only is it arrogant as hell to pretend you can... Like, oh, I'll explain how the roads will work. Well, I can make a guess how they might work, but it's really freaking likely that a bunch of other people are going to come up with better ideas that will be implemented instead of whatever mine is. And it's kind of arrogant for me to pretend I know how the whole world would work without a ruling class. Like, if I was capable of knowing that, I should probably be emperor or something. Um... But in addition to it being impossible to say how everything's going to work and arrogant to even try to entertain the, the changing the subject routine is to, is to let it win. Like, let it succeed in getting the, the discussion away from the thing they don't dare to look at. Instead of just saying, all right, well, later we can talk about who might build the roads or maybe we won't, whatever. But the question right now is, you know, can people delegate a right they don't have? If that isn't, a road isn't suddenly going to change the answer to that in either direction. So, which is it? And it's, you know, it just, it dawned on me in the discussion, pretty much every single statist argument is an attempt to change the subject to not actually give an argument against the, the basis of, you know, self-ownership and, and non-aggression and all that. Um, and even the, even where an argument makes a little bit of sense, it's still almost always an attempt to avoid recognizing and accepting some blatant obvious truths. Like you say, like, aggression's bad, you shouldn't attack people, you should only use force and self-defense. If somebody says, 
well, well, what if you're, what if you're, what if you're in a desert and you're gonna die of thirst and there's a house and there's nobody home and you go in and get a glass of water, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Like, that is their attempt. Like, on the one hand, it's true. Yeah, in that case, I would break in and take a glass of water and then I would make restitution. <laughs> Not like it takes a whole lot of restitution for makeup for a glass of water. But then I would do something about it. But therefore what? So therefore it's perfectly okay to attack anybody whenever. Like, no. <laughs> you really want to make that argument? So sometimes, like, there's sometimes that nitpicking is actually a good thing because it can clarify things and bring out exceptions and bring out, uh, or sometimes say, well, yeah, you actually described that wrong because that, you know, that isn't the principle. This is the principle over here. Um, so sometimes nitpicking is actually useful, but when the nitpicking serves the purpose of evading the basic point and the basic concept, it's just, you know, it's, it's argument trolling. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to throw, and there's somebody, uh, I won't mention his name in part cause I can't remember his name, but there's somebody at, at, at Porkfest who seems to just be an argument troll who looks for little things to throw in just to try to derail the discussion, like complain about a term or complain about a this or say, what about this really weird scenario? It's like, are you like, you could do that with almost anything, any statement like, well, I'm going to think of a really bizarre, you know, fabricate some exception or some, something that that isn't true of instead of just going, yeah, as a general rule that, and as a general rule this, whether you're talking about a moral principle or a description of reality or whatever else. Um, but a lot of time that sort of thing is a, is a, like, mental defense mechanism that the human brain does to not have to think about something. Um, and it's because people, people were taught to, to accept the political mythology on faith. Like they didn't, they didn't at all come to that conclusion based on logic and evidence. Well, and, and you really can't based on, well, we need like, it's like saying, uh, how are we going to build a road here? I don't know. Magic pixie dust. What? Magic pixie dust. You, you, you sprinkle it around and a road appears. Like, well, uh, okay. Because, well, could we just build it the normal way? No, we don't have enough resources. Okay. Well, in that case, we need magic pixie dust. And therefore, there is magic pixie dust because we need it. Nobody would make that argument. And yet, that's basically what... <laughs> statists are saying when they say, oh, well, what about the roads? Okay, so poof. Now, somehow rituals can give some people an exemption from morality because roads or because the poor or because scary foreigners or because whatever your, whatever your fear for the day is. Like, you don't ever reach that conclusion by way of, no matter how scared you are, you don't ever think, well, in that case, we can do something that is logically impossible, because we need to do something logically impossible, therefore we can. So they accept it on faith, because they were taught to believe the political mythology, and then they their brains do these weird uh, dodges and evasions. Basically, every statist argument is making some excuse for not being consistent and not being rational. Um, like, you know, somebody says, oh yeah, Santa Claus comes to everybody's house and gives a present. Somebody else says, how does he fit down the chimney? Isn't he a huge fat guy? Uh, a lot of people, uh, like most chimneys, don't fit a huge fat Well, he has dust or something that makes him little. Okay, that's excuse number one. What about people who don't have chimneys? Um, I don't know, he does something else. <laughs> excuse number two. Wait a minute, how's he got that many freaking households in one night? Like, even if you spent 10 seconds per household, it would take months, or at least weeks. Uh, well, it's just some warp in the time-space continuum. Huh? Like, wait, you keep up just making up excuses. You started with a premise that you had no reason to believe, and now you're just sort of making a patchwork of bogus excuses to not have to go back to your premise and say, yeah, that was, that was a pile of bunk. 
and that's all statists ever do is try to throw patches on to keep to to cover up the initial premise of a legitimate ruling class that they were taught to believe on faith. So, and this is why, you know, so many anarchists get so frustrated trying to argue with statists because they'll change the subject and they'll, you know, what about this? And even if you explain it, they'll say, no, that won't work. Or, okay, maybe that'll work. But what about this thing over here? It's like, you keep coming up with a new reason to pretend this can't work or that it, it doesn't make sense or something. Like you're just fishing for excuses to not think about it. And it's because that's exactly what the status is doing. And they're not even trying to do that. It's just an automatic brain thing. And that's, um, I think this came up in the, in the, the context of talking about the mirror. Because that's, you know, one of the main points of the mirror is to try to get people to look at stuff without triggering these completely irrational um, boneheaded responses, these excuses for clinging to something irrational that they were taught before. Uh, but that really is all statists ever do is throw out excuses and things that change the subject so that they don't have to address the actual points. And you've, you know, if you're an anarchist, you've talked to people, you've probably noticed this. Like, I've tried to just answer these basic questions and they immediately get either dishonest or evasive or they'll change the subject or, um, and, uh, another, another example of that that came up in the discussion was, um, when somebody says, oh, taxes, the price we pay for civilization, yada, yada, yada. And if you do like what I've done with more people than I can count and say, all right, well, what do you personally advocate be done to me personally if I don't pay the demanded tribute? to the ruling class, if I don't pay quote-unquote taxes, what do you want to be done to me if I don't do that? And the fact that the vast majority of statists will hem and haw and dodge and, and, and either talk about something irrelevant, like they'll either say, well, this is what happens if you don't. It's like, yeah, I know what happens if you don't. Uh, that's not what I asked. I asked, what do you want to have happen to me if I don't pay tribute? Well, everyone has to pay their taxes. Okay, that's A, not true, and B, not relevant to the question. What do you want? And the fact that they constantly do the tap dance and dodge around, and I've done this you know, half a dozen times just in the last week, it shows that they're not, they're not even looking at their own belief system themselves. And again, it's not that they're... It's not the, you know, the lawyer technique of I'm going to change the subject or try to confuse things to win this argument. It's not even that conscious. They don't even notice what they're doing. Their brain just does it instinctively. Like, it doesn't want to just admit, I advocate that you be caged if you don't pay for whatever I want government to do. That is the literal truth. It's the obvious truth. And if you just see the literal re reality of what's going on and what voting does and what government does and all that, there's nothing controversial or debatable about that. Like, you voted for that guy. You knew he was going to keep, you know, running the, the taxation thing. You knew what was going to happen to people who don't pay the tribute. And you voted for him knowing that, trying to put him into power, knowing that he, that he would have his underlings prosecute and cage people who didn't pay tribute to them. You can't pretend you didn't know any of that. But at the same time, they do this weird psychological denial where their brain is trying to not know that. And that's one of the reasons it's so frustrating to talk to statists is their brain really is trying not to see certain things about what it believes. And it's why so many people get frustrated because it's like, I ask these simple questions and it always goes flying off on some tangent. And they, they sort of can't even help it because it's so uncomfortable for them to stay on point and look at it. And that's why, you know, the whole thing of the mirror is you have to go to great lengths to keep it comfortable so they don't feel like they're being judged. They don't feel like they're on the spot. Um to make it feel comfortable to actually look at that stuff and be literal about it. Like, all right, what do I advocate be done to those people? Um, oh, well, ugh, uh, uh. 
arrest them? That's just for not paying? That's kind of, well, I don't know. Uh, and as soon as they start to actually think about it, then there's some hope. But as long as their brain can change the subject a million times, it's why, you know, uh, the, again, I can't, I can't count how many times I've done this. I'll ask a question. And now, if someone's just very predictable, statist in their responses, I'll say, all right, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Instead of answering, you're going to evade and say something else and say something irrelevant. Then I'm going to ask again. You're going to get agitated. You're still not going to answer. You're going to say something else. At some point, you're going to complain about the question. A little later than that, you're going to say you already answered the question. And after that, you're going to run away, having never answered a basic question about what you advocate. And I will explain all of that. And then they will do all of that exactly as I said they would. And it's happened over and over again because it's this psychological phenomenon that's just so damn predictable because that's how psychological denial works. And it, that's why getting people out of the, the cult of statism really is like a cult deprogramming. If you just tell somebody, yeah, you were taught stuff, doesn't make sense, it's not true. So yeah, drop that. All, all that crap you were taught that whole time isn't true. They'll make up excuses and they'll, they'll, they'll just hallucinate stuff and make up stuff that isn't true or they'll change the subject or they'll say, you're some nasty person who was sent here to lie to me or, you know, all the weird things their brains can think of to do other than re-examine their assumptions. And so that's what we're up against. And that's, that's why I'm putting so much time into the mirror, because I think it'll be better than anything else, including me having a one-on-one -on -one with somebody, including anybody I know having a one-on-one -on -one with somebody, because um, the mirror can even be more gentle and passive than that, um, even when I'm in nice mode rather than in caustic, nasty debater mode. Um, so... So yeah, I think it's important to understand, you know, again, the, a lot of people think that, well, I understand the philosophy well enough, I should be able to convince people, and then they get all frustrated because they can't, because they don't understand psychology, and that's the thing getting in the way. It isn't that you don't have enough logic or you don't explain it well enough, it's that the other person's brain is doing weird ass stuff in order to not think about it, and you have to know how to get around that and get through that. Or it doesn't matter how obvious and simple and basic your explanations are. If their brain doesn't want to think about it, you can't force them to think about it. And the harder you try, the weirder their, their responses are going to get. Um, and just good luck getting through to them. So, but we have to, that's why we sort of have to study psychology if you want to be persuasive and get people out of the, you know, the statism they were indoctrinated into because it's the, the, what's the saying? You can't reason somebody out of something they didn't reason themselves into. Like they just took it on faith because they heard it. It's like a belief in Santa Claus and expect them to be reluctant and irrational and emotional and all sorts of things. When you start alleging that Santa Claus isn't real or government isn't real. Um, but yeah, it's important to note that none of their arguments are, are rational or even relevant. It's all their brain throwing out debris to try to cloud the basic issue because their brain catches a glimpse of the truth and is scared to death and then goes to great lengths to avoid looking at something that, that their brain knows is going to mess up their whole paradigm. So it tries to not look at it all and, and flounders around and dodges and evades and all that fun stuff.